the world only behaves as science says it should when we confine our engagement with it to information that is at a great distance from us, like reading the New York Times every day. If you read the New York Times every day, few miracles will occur while you are engaged in that activity. Essentially what is happening is you are getting your cultural programming for the day, all your switches, if any need being, need to be reset by cultural values, are reset at that point. But when we recede into what I call the primacy of immediate experience, the, the rules and models that we've been handed by science and uh, what's called common sense are just totally found to be inadequate. You can decondition yourself sufficiently to actually step outside the cultural illusion. It's a breathtaking possibility because nobody knows what's outside the cultural illusion. I mean, you know, Plato got it right. We are chained in a cave watching the flickering shadows of something. But uh, life taken with sufficient seriousness and pushed hard enough at the edges, then this stuff will... Um, give itself up to you. And it doesn't, it isn't about belief. It isn't about commitment to guru or dogma or method. It's about observational integrity. It's about witnessing and, and, and some kind of primacy of self. In other words, you have to believe that you can tell shit from Shinola. And when you say it's shit and they tell you it's Shinola, you have to vote with your own side. So what we are trying to do is return the focus of attention to individual experience. We have been slave too long to ideology transmitted hierarchically and based on a tremendously alienating instrumentality. That's what science depends on now, a tremendously alienating instrumentality. What we need to do is empower experience. Well, this is where the psychedelics come in, because citizens don't take psychedelics because it's illegal. Neither do marionettes, neither do robots, None of these well-behaved and mechanistic reductionist images of humanity take psychedelics because it's misbehaving. Misbehaving is a great sin. In fact, it's enshrined as the first sin. You'll regard that the psychedelic issue was there in Eden and somebody misbehaved and then they got tossed out forever and their children's children into the chaos of history. It's interesting to read in Genesis why this was. It was because they will become as we are, says Yahweh. They will become as we are if they eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. I suggest to you that this is precisely what we should seek to do and that this we is the voice of hierarchy, the voice of paternalism, the voice of the male ego finally right up into the storm god, the volcano god who lies uh, back there in the origins of monotheism. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. It's a wonderful thing to learn to be able to stand up and yell bullshit it, I, I did it when I first when I was about 18 years old, and it was the meme of the hour, and uh, it held, it, it blew their minds. It did blow their minds. It was uncivil. <laughs> it was uncivil. It lacked polity. It was rude and crude and correct, correct, because so much is being slung. And nobody is talking about 
the primacy of experience and the dignity of the individual. The dignity of the individual. We went a long way with this in America before we betrayed it. And it wasn't only betrayed by the clowns in Washington. It's also betrayed by anybody who clusters themselves around the feet of some self-proclaimed nabob. Because the fact of the matter is, nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows. Nobody has the faintest idea. The best guesses are lies. You may be sure of it. And so to pretend that one human being will lead another out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth is ludicrous, absolutely grotesque, a product of this empowering of the human image that has gone on through several thousand years of dominator culture. If you want a teacher, try a waterfall or a mushroom or a mountain wilderness or a storm-pounded seashore. This is where the action is. It's not back in the hive. It's not in the anthill. It's not knocking your head against the floor in front of somebody who claims that because of their lineage and whose feet they washed and whose feet they washed, that you should give credence to them. Knowledge is provisional. And uh, we, we are yet to approach even the first moment of civilized understanding. The way it is to be done is by trusting yourself, trusting your intuition. Reject authority. Authority is a lie and an abomination. Authority will lead you into ruin. It's not real. And it isn't, don't get the idea that it's this liberal rap about how everybody has a piece of the action. You know, the Jews know something, the Buddhists know something, the Huichol know something. Nonsense. Rubbish. Nobody knows anything. These are different kinds of shell games that have been worked out by priestly castes of people to keep things under control. Institutions seek to maximize control, control, control. That's what they're into. Did you think they were in the business of enlightening you? Saving your soul? Forget it. Control is what this is all about. And to the degree that we commit ourselves to ideology, we are poisoned. Any ideology, Marxism, Catholicism, objectivism, you name it, rubbish, all rubbish. What is real is experience. What is real is this moment. And so then what it becomes about is what are the frontiers of experience? How much of that has been taken away from us by these dominators, by these priesthoods, by these cults, by these philosophical shell games? Well, a lot. That's the whole story of history. Our growing unease, our growing disease, our malaise is all about the fact that we are kept from the wellspring of experience. We need to think about these things because we have bought into the idea that we have to serve and behave and be enslaved, else chaos will engulf the world. We need to carry out our analysis of the situation to the point where we can embrace chaos and see that chaos is the environment in which we all thrive. That's how I've done it for years. You think I could have lived, you think I could have gotten away with this in the Soviet Union? I don't think so. I require a society on the brink of social breakdown to be able to do <laughs> my work. And, uh, and I think a society on the brink of social breakdown is the healthiest situation for individuals. I don't know how many of you have ever had the privilege of being in a society in a pre-revolutionary situation, but the cafes stay open all night, and there's music in the streets, and you can breathe it, you can feel it, and you know what is happening. The dominator is being pushed. It never succeeds. It never uh, 
It never is able to claim itself. But on the other hand, history is young. We may have, uh, we may have a crack at this. If you are a, a inside a Christian world, or a capitalist world, or a Jewish world, or a Republican world, or a democratic world. These are worlds of ideas. These are ideas. And we can live by ideas, but we can't live by ideas alone. It makes, it creates megalomania. It creates unbalance. It creates a, a grotesque parody of what life is supposed to be about. And what life, I think, is supposed to be about is the reclamation of the primacy of direct experience. And that means sex and psychedelics and dancing and conversation and good eating and lots of exercise and travel and uh, attention to what Wittgenstein called the present at hand. The present at hand, meaning what you can reach is what's real. And everything else, you know, becomes progressively more hypothetical, more abstract. Uh, it's the process which formed the planet, which called life out of the ocean, which called higher animals out of lower animals which called uh, humanity out of the primates, and which called history out of tribal, sacral, timeless existence. And what it is leading toward is some kind of uh, apocalyptic, transformative flowing together of everything that is beyond our language system. It's the umbilicus of being. It's where it's all tied together and therefore it's very hard to describe it. I think that all of our science and our religion and our history, these are uh, patterns thrown across a limited set of dimensions by the hyperdimensional fact of a certain object at the end of history toward which we are moving, to which we are being drawn. I think that most things about man are mysterious and that what is happening to us is mysterious. The sudden explosive development of the neocortex is entirely out of context with what we know about the rates of evolution that go on in other species and previously went on in the primates. Now it's been very fashionable in the past, you know, I don't know, 50 years or something to uh, think that it's all very humdrum somehow. And yet, this is just everybody, every ideological system that has been granted the status of uh, being the official view of reality has always proclaimed that it had everything nailed down but the last 5% and their best people were working on that. But I think that we are, for all that we know, we know practically nothing. And that, though I am not in any sense of the, well, not in any sense, but in most senses I am not religious, I think that religious thinking about the transformation of the world is more on the right track than the notion that the laws of physics will always be what they are, the laws of biology will always be what they are, and we're all just going to go along and things are going to get worse and worse or better and better, but that there are no surprises. I think that we do not see what's going on. One of the reasons I like to make this argument about the mushroom and the extraterrestrial and all that is just to show people that maybe this isn't true, but look how you can see things differently. If things can be seen that differently, how many ways can they be seen differently? And to try and get people to realize, to stop waiting for the president to enlighten you. In other words, stop waiting for uh, history and the stream of historical events to make it clear to you. 
you have to take seriously the notion that understanding the universe is your responsibility because the only understanding of the universe that will be useful to you is your understanding. It doesn't do you any good to know that somewhere in some computer there are tensor equations which perfectly model or perfectly don't model something that's going on. And we have all tended to give away ourselves to official ideologies and to say, well, I may not understand, but someone <coughs> understands. But the fact of the matter is only your own understanding is any good to you. I mean, because it's you that you're going to live with and it's you that you're going to die with. And as the song says, you know, the last dance you do, you do alone and you want to be in good company <laughs> then. So... Uh, it's very, it's very important to, uh, to cultivate this aspect of yourself and to be with it. Uh, the way you reclaim your identity is by reclaiming your ideological primacy. You are the arbiter of what is real. And if we want to change the world, we have to empower the means that return control to the social atom, to the individual, because that's the only authentic existence that any of us know. I mean, in its most radical remonstrance, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure about me, but you could be anything, <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, you can, you can pull the focus in quite tight. And, and this is because the nearer you get to the meat, the more existentially vital it seems to be. And, you know, the psychedelics are the tool par excellence for doing this. They connect you back up to the archaic vegetable mind that was uh, in place at the dawn of history. You know, whether you like my little story about the Mayans or not, I think it's difficult to deny that something happened, that we have fallen into a peculiar place. And yet there is still the intimation of a transcendent possibility. So this whole uh, effort, to bring the psychedelic experience back into prominence is an effort to empower individuals and to get them to see that we are bled of our authenticity by vampirish institutions that will never of their own accord leave us alone. There must be a moment when the machinery and the working of the machinery becomes so odious that people are willing to stride forward and throw sand on the track and uh, force a reevaluation of the situation. And it's not done through organizing. It's not done through vanguard parties or cadres of intellectual elites. It's done through just walking away from all of that, claiming your identity, claiming your vision, your being, your intuition, and then acting from that without regret, cleanly, without regret.